Hello friends, in this session we are going to see the instance control flow of a program, right? And uh, assume I have, uh, you have a class, say class A, in that A class you have instance variable say int x and you have a so it is having some hardcode I will say it is 10 and you have uh, one instance block and I will write here a SOP statement instance initialization block 1 suppose and it has a local variable say int i is equal to say uh, 99 and print the i value so this is i printing and uh, it also has to print the SOP statement of x and it will print the SOP statement of y and y is actually say this is int y and y will have a hard coded value say it is 20 right y is having hard coded value it is 20 then you have one more instance block <coughs> say instance block SOP statement instance initialization block 2 and done right then uh, not done it has another local variable say int i is equal to uh, 88 and it has to print the value of i and it has to print the value of say sop statement x and print the value of sop statement y and this is the second static block right then uh, you will have one more say you have a line I'll draw here and assume you have say you have a void and show method which has to print uh, say SOP statement this is show method called and it has to print the value of x and it has to print the value of y right so this is a show method y and this is show method and this is class ends here now assume you have a uh, class test class test in that public static void and main method and uh, or before that, before that, you take one more uh, constructor also in this class which is going to initialize this x and y. So I'll take a constructor here, a constructor, which takes int x as an argument and int y is an argument. And it prints here a SOP statement of a int and int argumented constructor, right? and now it has to say here it is this dot x is x and this dot y is y so this is the constructor and this is class over now you have a main method in this say class test test and test is having the main method public static void and main method and inside the main method, I'll create an object of A with the two argumented constructor and I'll give here value say 1, 1 and 2, 2. Sorry, you have to say here uh, A, A1 is new A of 1, 1 and 2, 2. Right? And you say A1 dot show when you do like this. This is over. And say here this is the output we're going to get in this and here I'll write when you execute Java and test press enter then it has to start the JVM and the memory should be elevated so the memory is suppose it is this so this is the JVM memory
this is having so this is the method area and stack and heap right now we say java and test then jbm has started and jbm requested some memory from the operating system memory is divided into these parts and test class has to be loaded so this is test is loaded test and main method starts execution now inside the main method the first step is create a reference variable say a a1 this is a1 now when you say like this a1 okay at that time it will not jbm will not search what is a actually it will just create a variable of type a1 a and the name is a and the size of this is 8 byte because it is a reference variable so when now you will say new a and you will say new a and then jbm has to uh, search what is a exactly so a class should be loaded at the time of loading the a class here it follows the static control flow of a class and that we have already discussed in the previous session so here we are just uh, i'm just telling that a class is loaded now uh, when a class loading is done it calls new a means from here it is a1 is equal to new of a with 1 1 and 1 2 right now when you tell a constructor like this new a1 of new a on top of this actually the a constructors get loaded so this is a constructor is loaded when you call a constructor constructor is loaded but inside this constructor you have this right uh, it has two instant local variable x is the local variable and uh, uh, the value which you are supplying for x is 1 1 and y is again local variable the value is 1 2 so constructor is loaded once the constructor loading is over in the constructor you have the first statement is super and super also we have discussed somewhere in some session you have to go through that what is the use of super class and we have seen this keyword also and the use of this keyword also you have to see now when any constructor you call a constructor like this from the main method actually this is the constructor call constructor gets loaded once the constructor is loaded over it has the first statement as super and super means it has to call the super class default constructor and currently in this super class is object class so object class default constructor get loaded once the object class default constructor is loaded then jvm creates here one object this is the object created and at the time of creating the object it starts the uh, instance control flow now what what are the tasks jvm has to do when jvm is creating the object of this class a so what jvm does is jvm first again same way uh, how in instance control flow we have seen here also jvm goes to top to bottom approach and it identifies what are the instance members available in this so in that you have first instance variable x you have one instance block you have another instance variable and you have another instance block also right uh, so this is four and you have one instance method that is five right so uh, that is over but at that time not over actually at that time when it jbm goes through the entire class and it identifies what are the instance members available at that time what are ist instance variables found what instance variables found in that for all the instance variable jbm allocates the memory inside that corresponding object and initialize that with the default values so x memory is allocated that is zero y memory is allocated that is also zero right so first uh, this is the first run and first stage is over at that time this stage is called as instance initialization instance initialization instance initialization right this is step uh, in first in first phase only when jvm goes through the entire class and identifies what are the instance members available and allocates the memory for all the instance variables and initialize that to the default value depending on the data type once that uh, task is over that is called as this is stage that is stage of that uh, object is called as instance initialization once that is done then uh, control again uh, again uh, jvm has to go through the entire class and it has to uh, execute it has to execute all the instance block and the instance variables also in the same order how that appears in the source file but not method okay it is just the instance variable and instance blocks at that point again these two variables at this point also these two variables are read indirectly and write only mode you cannot uh, read that two directly if you try to read these two again directly again you are going to get here a 
illegal forward reference. So, uh, so in this uh, stage, after comparing this stage, these two variables are in read indirectly and write only mode. So, uh, first task is over. Then when JBM again goes through the next step, again it has to go through the entire class for the next run. And in that, what JBM will do is, first step is this is X. X has to be initialized. So, in that I will write it is a 6. 6 has to be initialized the X and X value is 10 at this point. Then it gets an instance block. An instance block has to execute. This is uh, 7. 7. Instance block has to execute. And here the first step of instance block is instance initialization block in 1. Then it has to allocate a memory. But when it is executing the static block, instance block here, instance block has to execute and a local variable is there int i. So local variable of that uh, instance block should be allocated inside the corresponding stack here. I am not writing it is inside the stack of the corresponding uh, uh, inside the corresponding stack frame is a local variable. So it has to allocate somewhere say i, i locally allocated in the corresponding stack frame and it gives the value here 99. Now control is at this point and it is printing 99. Right. Then it has to go to x. At that time x x is already ready. Here x value is already initialized. Now x is in read and write mode. x you can read or x you can write. So it is reading the x value and x value is now 10. Now it goes to y. y is not initialized. y is not initialized with hard coded value still. So y remains in read indirectly and write only mode. You can just write and you cannot read. So what uh, problem you are going to face here is this is illegal forward reference. So what you have to do to avoid with that you can do is SOP statement of this dot y. If you do that this dot y you are not reading directly or indirectly you are reading with the object reference and now it will read directly no problem it is not giving any problem and it will give here the output of y current value y current value is 0 here. right? that is over so instance block execution is over <coughs> once the instance block execution is over then uh, control comes into the next instance uh, not next instance but actually you have this statement in middle so here uh, this is step number 8 and 8 is y should be initialized with 20 y is initialized with 20 right now uh, okay i'll add two more point here say again i am x is reinitialized at this point say it is 9 9 and y is reinitialized with say some 8 8 right so one uh, sorry it is not at this point it is actually inside the instance block so after completing this dot y after completing this dot y here i'll write two more point that is x is initialized with 8 8 and y is initialized with 9 9 before coming to this point okay before coming to step 3 it is here so what we'll do is now x value is not this also x value after printing the x value here what is the x value x value is 10 at that point so x value is printed here 10 once the printing is 10 over this dot y this dot y is at that time 0 the next stage is x initialized with 88 so this x is now 80 x i'll write here okay x is 88 now and y is 99 at this point right so uh, x is initialized y is also initialized now both x and y is in reading and writing state so you can read and write then control comes at this point here y and y should be reinitialized with 20 so this value is 20 now inside the so this is over this is 8 and this is instance block is sorry it is 9 so it gives here the output instance initialization block 2 and again another i local variable it is not this i previous i is destroyed and it is a new i i is equal to 88 and now i should be printed so the i value here is 88 right then x should be printed x value currently at that point x is 88 so here it prints 88 and it has to print y y is at that time 20 so it prints here 20 y value is 20 so again i'll initialize here x with reinitialization x is equal to 101 and uh, y is reinitialized with 102. So when y printing is over, then it comes here and x reinitialized with 101 and y reinitialized with 102. Right, so this is done. So this is uh, in the next stage, in the next run, 
this is uh, x is reinitialized first instance block executed y is reinitialized second instance block execution is also done over then uh, control it is actually the control came back from here to this when the object is created that time control is over at that point from object uh, uh, class default constructor control is over he, it comes back here when uh, the object was created and was initialized with uh, the default values so now when this complete execution is over at that point control comes back to the constructor and then constructor remaining statement is going to be executed so constructor remaining executor execution is first it has to print here a with int and int argumented constructor is called and this dot x is x here you have this dot x is x means this x local x should be shine with this dot x so this dot x is actually this one so now this x value is not one not one here it is actually becoming what value you are supplying it is 11 so this value becomes 11 and again you have this dot y is y so this is this dot y and this dot y is uh, 12 so this y will becomes 12 at this point right so uh, here what we did in the first when jvm starts creating the object first it calls the constructor on top of that the object class default constructor is called and then the object is created then the instance control flow starts execution as the instance control flow jvm goes through the entire class and identifies what are the instance members available allocates the memory for all the instance variables and initializes that with the default values that is called as instance uh, initial uh, instance initialization instance initialization once that is over then again control starts from the beginning and it goes through the entire class again but at that, that time all the instance variable gets the hard coded value if available and if not available then that remains default values but in the next time when con again uh, control goes through the entire class it executes all the instance variable and also all the instance block in the same order how they appears in the source file and once all that instance block and uh, instance variable execution is over then control comes back to the constructor and it executes the remaining statement of the constructor once the remaining statement of the constructor is also over, control comes back from where the constructor was called. So control comes back into this. And at that time when control is coming here, the control carries the address of that object also, so that is 1020, and it stores into A1. So this is 1020, and A1 starts pointing to this object. So this is uh, instance control flow, how JVM works. Now, uh, class loading in the last session we have seen the static control flow a static control flow is at the time of class loading and instance control flow is at the time of object creation now how many times class is going to be loaded in the jvm there is only once means the class loading is going to continue only once for the first time when jvm is loading a class but instance control flow how many times it is to continue how many object you are creating every time this complete operation jvm has to perform once so if currently here we are creating only one object so this is only one object and for this one object these are the tasks jvm is doing and finally when you will say here show method and it gives here show is called and x value currently x value here is 11 and y will also print so y value is 12 so here you are going to say uh, show is called and 11 and 12 will be the output at this point 11 and sorry first it is show is called show is called and 11 x value and 12 y value you're going to get so currently we are creating only one object and on that one object only jvm is doing all these operations if i create one more object say a r a1 a2 is new a of say uh, some one and two if i write like this then for this object creation again jvm has to perform the entire task in this and one more point importantly you have to remember here when uh, control comes back from this construct to the main this is going to be destroyed completely and now a1 starts pointing to this object and object is ready right so this is instance control flow of a uh, java program and how many times you create the object every time it has to uh, go through the entire class and you have to do like this now let's see that with an example so I have say class A 
and in a class you have one instance variable x and that is having some output variable set n and you have one instance block in that you write instance initialization block one and it has a local variable int i is 99 it is to print i and then i'll print here x and i'll print here y also y but this y will give illegal forward reference because i'm declaring here y and y is uh, 20 first time so this is giving a illegal fraud reference to avoid that overcome with that what you have to do is this dot y <coughs> here you have to remember when the static variable you are reading like this you are when you are getting illegal forward reference for a static variable to read that static variable to avoid the static illegal forward reference you have to read the static variable with the class name but when it is an instance variable for instance variable when you are getting illegal forward reference you have to read that variable with the this keyword okay so this is uh, y and you have one more instance block and i'll write here it is instance initialization block 2 and now again i'll take another local variable i 99 and i'll print i now you print again x and print again y but y again i'll reinitialize here say x is 88 eight, and y is 99 something like this right then uh, okay this is done then i'll create a method void show function which is instance again and printing uh, show is called show is called now in this i'll print the x and i'll print the y also so this is y and I'm not printing simply like this. This is y is y, and this is x. X is x, right? And these two only I have to give at this point, and give here also. And this is illegal for our reference. So what you have to do is. to say here it is this dot this dot y right this dot y now you take a constructor also to initialize this to a int x and int y and in this uh, say uh, a int and int argumented constructors and at that this dot x is equal to x and this dot y is equal to y right so this is class is ready now if i want to create an object of a what you have to do is this is a a1 new a with say 1 1 and 1 2 something like this right and you call a1 dot show right now when i'll run this program what JVM has to do is when you say uh, new A, then control should come. When you say new A, control is coming at the constructor. And constructor is having first statement as super. First statement is super. So it is going to the object class default constructor, and object class default constructor is creating the object. This object is created, right? This is the object. And this object is 1040, and this is actually uh, a1 inside the main method, right? So, when object class default constructor creates this object, and then instance control flow starts execution. So, JVM will go through the entire class and find out the instance members. First, it has x, and it gets the default value 0. Then, it has another y, and y memory is allocated that is also 0. At that time, these two variable is in read indirectly and right only mode right now uh, first this is done first run is completed and in the second run again what jbm does is it goes through the entire class and initialize this x with 10 and execute the first instance block so it prints here instance initialization block one and one local variable i memory somewhere allocates and the value is 99 it is local in scope okay and i is printed then it goes to x x is now when x is initialized with this value now x is reading and writing mode 
so uh, x value is there it is 10 it prints now if I just write this statement first to y y is still in read indirectly and write only mode so y you cannot read so to read that y forcefully what you are doing here is this dot y and this dot y is 0 it is printing here 0 then x is getting reinitialized now x value is not this x value is 88 and y is reinitialized y is not reinitialized this first time so y value is 99 when y value is 99 y is also in reading and writing mode right that is over so this is once this is over then uh, y y gets initialized with 20 again so this is 20 and it goes to the next instance initialization block instance initialization block 2 and again when i memory is allocated i is again 99 99 is printed again x is printed at that time x value is 88 and y value is 20 right then in that what we did again is again we have uh, initialized in that again we have initialized this uh, instance block okay again we have to initialize actually okay if you are not initializing okay and uh, it goes to once this is also over then where the control goes uh, control goes to the once this is over that is done and control goes to the remaining statement of the constructor should be executed remaining statement of the constructor should be executed but constructor already started at the beginning okay it completes the complete execution of the remaining statement of the constructor at last once uh, the all the instance variable and all the instance block execution is over then remaining statement of the constructor starts execution and it prints here a int and int argumented constructor right now this dot x is x this x is actually 11 you have given so this is 11 and this dot y is 12 so this value is now 12 so this is execution is over everything is ready the address of this is stored here 1040 and it points in this right once that is done control uh, this is ready and this is stored a1 now control comes into next statement a dot show and show function is called and what is there in the show function show function has to write here show is called and it is to print the value of x and y x value is 11 y value is 12 so it prints here 11 and prints 12 so this is execution is over of this now if i run this program and see the output how it works is okay run the output and see the run it and see the output output is this right how it is working here is first time uh, instance initialization block it is showing here the second run then 99 99 is the local variable for this i 99 is the local variable i then uh, x is 10 x is 10 because here at this point it is printing x x is 10 because at this point x is already initialized with 10 now y y at that point is this one this dot y if you don't use here this dot y it is illegal forward reference so it is printing this dot y and once this execution is over y x is reinitialized with 88 and y is reinitialized with 99 and then instance initialization block second instance initialization block starts executing and y is 99 sorry this is local variable i 99 x is 88 and y is 20 after that only it is going to call the remaining statement of the constructor so here important point you have to notice here is when you just call this constructor in that first statement you have super and because of super control goes to the object class default constructor and object class default constructor only creates the object then instance ins, instance control flow starts in your program and it is done so this is instance control flow of a java program Thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe for more videos. <coughs>